Let's get to meteorologist Mariel Ruiz. And Mariel, I think a lot of people talking about, you know, the fact that people have not recovered from Helene from Helene and this is an area that's going to be impacted that was impacted with Ian just two years ago. I was on the phone with my brother earlier this morning because he lives in Tampa. He was on his way back and now he's not. He's changing his plans because of how serious this is. And we have a very active tropical scene. In fact, this morning we had three active hurricanes in the Atlantic. That has never happened in recorded history after the month of September. So this is considered late in the season, but of course we're going to focus on Milton. Milton is a category five storm as of this morning, and this is what it looks like on satellite before it even arrives to Florida. Look at that. All of that rain in Florida. Again, this area not recovered yet from Helene just last week. Max sustained winds right now of 160 miles per hour, wind gusts of 190 miles per hour. This is a monster of a storm. The second category five of this season. Barrel was the first, so we'll continue to see this con uh, as a category five storm the next 24 to 48 hours. Eventually it's going to encounter what's called wind shear, and that's going to drop the status from a five to a three right ahead of landfall. Landfall expected late Wednesday into early Thursday. Models are not consistent on this, and I'll show you that as it moves over Florida. It continues as a hurricane, so think not just the soaking rain, but hurricane force winds as it moves over Florida and then eventually goes into the Atlantic. This is what it looks like, though, whenever we're talking about model inconsistency. Every line that you see here is a different model output. Some models have this making landfall north of Tampa. Some models have this making landfall well to the south, closer to Fort Myers and Mar Marco Island, where Ian made landfall just two years ago. So again, a lot of inconsistency. That's going to very much impact the storm surge forecast. Either way, Hurricane watch, tropical storm watches in place all along Florida's west coast. And look at the storm surge. This is the part that concerns me. 8 to 12 feet of storm surge from Tampa all the way south of Sarasota to the north of that, 5 to 8 feet. So anybody on the north side of this is going to see less storm surge. Anyone on the south side is going to see more storm surge. That's why where it makes landfall is going to make a big impact. The big driver is that cold front. That cold front that came through to Today, that's going to help steer it. At first, it helps dip it towards the south, closer towards the Yucatan Peninsula, and then eventually we're going to see this help weaken the storm. So the wind shear from that cold front is going to help drop this, hopefully, to less than a Category 3. But right now, forecast calls for a Category 3, which is considered a major hurricane. This particular model has it slowing down quite a bit, which means the flood concern is going to increase. But we'll see this make landfall again sometime Wednesday into Thursday. This will likely still change. And I'm not even including the uh, the rainfall forecast there. Some places could get up to a foot on top of that storm surge.